Hey guys, welcome back and today I'm going to be going over proper positioning in Slapshot and some set plays that you guys can make. Passing is a huge part of the game that nobody really realizes yet. I've asked a few of the pros in the community for their opinions and I received a few different styles of rotation and cycling that work well. Getting right into it, I'm going to start on offense. The most common and dynamic formation to play is a triangle formation. You can see what I'm talking about on screen. You should have player A in the corner battling for the puck while players B and C are at the points. If player A wins to puck along the boards, it's a common play to see him rim the puck around to player B. While this is a good play to make, you should always look to pass it to player C. If player A wins clean possession off the boards, player C should be looking to cut into the slot for a one-timer. You also have a few options if player A loses the puck. Like you see here, if player A loses it behind the net, player C should come in behind and move to the A spot. Player A moves to the B spot and player B becomes the new C. It's also worth mentioning that if the puck changes corners, the point men need to rotate, meaning player C gets on the boards and player B drifts to the center to become the new C. It's really hard for the defense to break out this way because you cover nearly every option the defense has. There is one counter to this setup though, and that's the dump and chase, which is why I only recommend that more experienced players use a triangle setup. The safer and less aggressive setup involves a four checker and a point man, with a goalie or defender in your own zone. The benefit to the setup is that the dump and chase is less likely to work and you're less vulnerable to fluky long shots. However, the downside of the setup is that it's difficult to get passing plays off and holding pressure is unlikely to work. Player A is again the forechecker in the scenario, however, player B now sits in the middle of the ice. The player in the B position needs to be on his toes, ready to move to the boards to block a clearing attempt by the defense. And then player C is obviously sitting way back in your own net just in case a long shot finds its way past player B. I don't really recommend this sort of play style unless you're newer and having a hard time passing or unless you're trying to hold on to a lead. Moving on to defense, there's really only one setup I recommend using and it's directly similar to the first offensive setup I talked about. On screen again, the puck is in the corner and the defense is set up in a triangle. On defense, you should always be in position to initiate a breakout. Here we have player B battling for the puck and he needs to be the only person on the puck and needs to chase after it like a dog. Player A needs to be floating around the high slot or somewhere on the strong side. If player B gains possession of the puck, player A needs to either cut across the ice for a pass or get on the boards for a clear. It's really up to him. And then player C needs to use their spacebar to glue themselves to the post whenever possible, because it sucks when the puck hits you and sneaks in. Moving up the ice, if player A has the puck, they can go for a shot or a dump in, and they obviously become the A4 checker on offense. Player B, who is just in the corner battle, needs to move up to his position on the boards, and the player that was goalie moves to center ice to become player C. Now, you may be thinking, Sean, this advice is great and all, but what if the puck is in open ice? No matter where the puck is in open ice, I find that it's best to have somebody in net, one person covering a passing lane, and one four checker. The job of everyone is to block the puck, but the four checker needs to be in the opponent's face and needs to block them from doing anything. I find a helpful way of doing this is using your stop right in front of them to spook them a little bit. More times than not, they'll end up just throwing it into you. Other than the rotations I mentioned, I feel like most of it is pretty intuitive so I won't go over them. Soon I'll be releasing a guide to playing on the boards to better help you guys in these situations. One thing I didn't mention is don't play specific positions, or at least I don't recommend it. Try to play every position, and it helps out your team more. Also, don't punch up. It sounds obvious, but it happens way too often. I had a few people help me out with this video. Shoutouts to Delucha, Gubby, and Dank Gank for sharing their tips with me. Their links are in the description. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys later. Take care, and goodbye.